Hey, welcome to a new tutorial here. Today we're going to be giving this guy a hand with his home design choices by learning about patching through the 3D camera system. So I got my denoise plate over here and as usual, we got a bit of lens distortion to handle. If you try to draw an imaginary line across the screen, you can see that what would be a straight line has a bit of a bend to it. And there's three things we can do to handle this. If we had the lens specs, we could totally pass that into the camera tracker in a couple of ways and that would solve the problem but we don't we can either let the camera tracker solve it or we can do it ourselves sometimes one's better than the other it takes a bit of experimenting to find the best result for this tutorial i'm opting to do my own camera distortion so we're going to try to understand it in the old way we're going to call a legacy node called the lens distortion so we're going to press x and then we're going to type lens distortion here just as it is we're going to put it right below the plate we're going to go to the line analysis section tick the drawing option and now we're just going to be marking a path over an area that should be straight but isn't because of the distortion of the lens such as the edge of the house the frame of the door the post or the garden wall on the side so I mark my points just by clicking. And once I have my path ready, I'm going to right click and it's going to draw a line. So we're going to draw as many as we can, either vertically or horizontally, to give the node enough information to solve the distortion pattern. With a good amount of lines set up, we're going to hit the analyze button and we're going to check the result. You might need to try this a couple of times until you get a result where the image information that you have on the edges straightens. Right below our lens distortion node, we're going to create the camera tracker. And by this point, you might get the impression that there's a lot of menus and complicated buttons all over the place, but you're only ever going to mess with a couple of them. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you. Anyways, go to the settings tab and take on the preview features while having the viewer on the camera tracker. You'll see that the area is populated by points, which will be used to track the footage. We're gonna change the number of points to a thousand, and we're also gonna turn on the refine features location, which pretty much means that we're asking Nuke to actually do a bit of thinking before placing the points so that we can actually grab good tracking areas as opposed to random ones. So we're gonna adjust like, the minimum length to 15. So what that means is that any given point to be considered valid for this camera track has to be consistently good for at least 15 frames. With that said, we're gonna go back to the main tab and hit track. Once we got the track down, we're gonna hit solve. And as you can see, our track came in with an error rate. This is normal. Now we're gonna try to reduce the error by going to the auto tracks tab and adjusting the max and track error. What happens when we do this is that we start rejecting points that do not meet the criteria that we're asking for here. We want to bring them down as much as possible while keeping a good chunk of points so that we can actually play around with our 3D scene, right? I'm going to click delete rejected and delete unsolved. Go back to the main tab and click update solved. Our solved error has now changed. The lower the solve error is, the better. Moving on, on the export section, I'm gonna select scene plus, create. So what we got here is our 3D camera setup. I'm gonna remove this lens distortion thing over here, taking advantage of the connection to connect the plate to the 3D scene through a merge. I won't be explaining the magic behind all of this now. We're gonna go straight to creating our first projection. Now, if we set the viewer to the scanline render and press tab, we will be able to see our 3D environment. By holding control, I can rotate around the environment and take a look at the points that we created. They represent the house that we were trying to track. Now, I'm going to create a card node. You'll see it pop in the viewer right away. And I'm going to adjust its position to match the geometry that this collection of points is trying to create. And all I'm doing here while having the card selected I'm dragging the axis and by holding control, I can do rotation. Now that I've adjusted the position of the card, I'm just going to make it a bit taller and then I'm going to connect the card to the scene. I'm going to create a frame hold set to 218. I'm going to connect it to the undistort node, create a roto, do this shape, pre-mold it. Then I'm going to create a node called project 3D. 
and I'm going to connect it to the pre mold and to the card. Copy paste the frame hold, connect it to the camera, and I'm going to connect the project 3D's cam input to the frame hold. So what's going on here is you're telling Nuke, hey, I got this image that belongs to the point of view from F to 18. So then Nuke is going to grab the car that we made and display that image from that point of view. So that means that if we actually look at the resulting image coming from the scan and render at that frame, nothing should change except for the difference in lens distortion. But that's something that we'll fix up ahead. But whenever you go to a different point in the timeline, you'll see that our image adjusts to a new point of view based off of that original reference point from F to 18. So that's essentially what projections are. You got the main camera here simulating the movement that we're seeing in the footage. And then we got a projector here, which is essentially a copy of the main camera frozen at frame 218 projecting onto our card, which allows this whole perspective magic to happen. Now to complete the projection, if we go back to frame 218 and compare the plate with the projected result, you'll see that there's a bit of a mismatch because our projection is not distorted. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy the lens distortion and we're going to paste it right after the scan line render. And we're going to uncheck the undistort option. Now, if you compare, you'll see that there's no difference between the original plate and the projected result. Now we're going to finish the paint aspect of the tutorial. For beginners, it might be tempting to create a paint node and start cloning away. While that would work, it is quite hard to paint in perspective. So now I'm going to show you this little trick to fix that. You're going to create a corner pin, deactivate it, and then we're going to drag the points and try to simulate the perspective that we're seeing on the wall. I'm just going to use the wall itself but you can use any other area that you want that will help you match the perspective. Once you've done that, you're going to check the invert button and reactivate the node. And there we go with the perspective fixed. To recover the image, we're going to create a reformat node, set it to scale and resize type to none. Then you're going to scale it up as much as you need to, to reveal your work area. And to finish this setup, we're just going to invert the whole process. We're going to create a reformat node again, set it to type to format and resize type none. Copy and paste the corner pin and uncheck the invert box. Now, if you compare the frame hold and the last corner pin, you'll see that there's no difference. So we successfully brought everything back to the way it was. Having that, we can create a paint node and start cloning away. I actually went ahead and created my own version of the paint out. Here it is. So with that done, we're going to visualize the result that we have. It is almost there. It just needs a couple of adjustments. We're going to do some color corrections. Add a grade note after your paint. We're going to keyframe the gain at 218. Leave it as is. Go to the first frame. I'm going to bring down the gain to match the brightness at the top area of the patch. I'm noticing that there's a bit of a difference in color. So I'm going to bring the green and blue channels down a bit. Now that blends way better. The next step, we're going to create a ramp node, take the replace option, connect it to the grade, create a new grade node after the one we have, mask it using the ramp node. Just like before, we're going to keyframe F128 and one. We're going to go to our ramp node. We're going to drag the line it makes onto our image. If you're not familiar with this node, it is pretty simple. It creates an alpha layer for us that directionally changes in value. If we look at the points on either side, you'll see that we have zero where no alpha information exists and one where the alpha value is at its maximum. And what we have in between is the gradual change in values either to maximum or to nothing. And this is very useful because you can use it to mimic shadows or create light fades, which is exactly what we are about to do now. Back to the plate now, we're going to increase the brightness at the bottom of the patch and gradually decrease that effect as we make our way to the middle of the patch. So I'm going to adjust the gain to 1.2 on frame one. Next up, we're going to create a blur after a roto node, set it to 9.6 affecting only the alpha. So now right after a lens distortion, we're going to create a defocus node. 
and we're gonna animate frame one, set the defocus level to 0.1, then go to F218 and set it to zero. And now we can preview the final result. From this point on, you could actually make this more interesting by integrating an element into the plate, such as graffiti, but we'll leave that for another occasion. Thank you for watching. Hey guys, I'm checking in here with a special announcement. I'm offering a live course designed exclusively for beginners or anybody wanting to start from scratch. It is an awesome opportunity because I know how difficult and time consuming the beginner stage is. As a newcomer, not only are you always finding yourself to be lost and confused, but also unsure about whether what you're doing is actually correct. And all this can be extremely demotivating but it doesn't have to be this way. And that's my goal, to make this a fun and smooth experience. And on top of that, give you the assurance that what you're doing is actually correct. And unfortunately, I can only take a small number of people because I wanna make this as personalized as it can be. If you're interested in this, go to learnbfxcom.com slash course, or use the link below to check out all the information about it. If you're interested in following along for this tutorial or any other in the channel, I got you covered. Sign up to the email list at learnbfxcomp.com and you'll receive access to all of the files you need for the tutorial, including the exact video file I used. And one last thing, if you're enjoying the content so far, please do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.